This is The Lock Picking Lawyer, and today we are starting a new video series on the locks pictured in front of you. For inclusion in this series, a lock had to meet three criteria. First, it has to have an inch and a half or 40 millimeter wide body. Second, it has to have an aluminum body. And finally, it has to have a removable core. Now in past video series, I've ranked the locks after I've picked them, but that's going to be a little bit more difficult with this series for the following reasons. These, lo these locks are really grouped close together. All of them have five or six pins, and every single one of these has security pins. So to take a little bit of the guesswork out of ranking these, I put together a point system that we'll use for the ranking. So here's how it goes. For each lock with six pins, we're going to give it two points. Then we will assign one point for each security pin, and that includes drivers and key pins. Then we'll give three points for a paracentric keyway, and two points if a specialized pick is required or makes it materially easier to open the lock. And by specialized, I mean anything thinner than 25 thousandths of an inch or an odd profile. So let's start this out by taking you through what locks I have laid out in front of you, and then we will choose one for picking. So first we have a, a Chinese generic lock. There's no brand on this. Then we have two master lock series 6835 locks. I'll probably do them together in the same video. Then we have a pack lock 90A, a Squire SAL40, a lock from the club brand, and a sesame lock at the end of the bottom row. Moving up to the top row, we have a CASP 14040. Then we have two Federal Lock 90As. The, one, the silver one, I believe, is older than the, than the blue one, and they have different keyways. And we have two American Lock Series 1100. The one on the left has the edge restricted keyway. Then we have a Mat Lock Series 5025. Two abuses. We have the 83 AL40, which takes a full size key, and then we have the 7240, which takes the smaller padlock size key. And finally, the last one is this Lockwood 214A40. Some of these locks were sent to me from people literally all over the world, and I'll give credit when we feature each of those particular locks. But to start this out, I'm going to go with what I expect will be the easiest to open lock of the group, and that's this generic Chinese one. So let's see what that takes to get into. Move all this stuff out of the way. We have a, a pretty nice little keyway on this lock. You can see it is, is pretty paracentric, so I'll probably give it the three points for that. And I have tried picking this off of the off of that edge of warding on the right side, and I was not able to do it with a standard 25 thousandths pick. I was able to do it with this specialized the SS Dev Sparrows hook in 25 thousandths, and I was able to do it in a fifth with a 15 thousand seven hook, which is what I'll use in this video. So I'm also going to give this lock the points for requiring a specialized pick to open up. So right off the bat, we're off to a good start with this lock. I'm using top of the keyway tension with a small wiper insert, and then this seven hook in 15 thousandths. Okay, got to click out of one. Did not feel like a security pin. Two is definitely binding. Got a little click out of him. Three, got to click out of him. Four is loose. Five is loose. Back to one. Okay, got another click out of one. Nothing on two, three, four. Okay, five is binding now. Okay, I think we, come on, five. 
Okay, I think we got five set. Back to one, two, three, four. Maybe we didn't get five. Okay, I just let off a little bit of tension and we appear to have dropped into a bit of a false set. Nothing on one, two, three. Okay, four is binding now. We got her open. I think four felt like a spool. Okay, so this lock definitely gave me a little bit of fight. Let's take it apart and see what's inside now. Okay, like most of these locks, this comes apart with a screw down the shackle hole. This is a Phillips screw. Okay, right off the bat we see a nice rusty screw. So I guess we're lucky that came out easily. And a totally grease-covered core. Let me wipe him off just a little bit. Okay, let's get this C-clip off the back now. Okay, now let's get the key and a follower. My key was actually a little bit sticky in there. It's never a good sign. Okay, this is a five pin core. And let's see if we can get these pins out. One is standard, two is standard. Okay, these are sticking pretty badly, so let me use a pick to get them out. Three is standard, four is standard, and five is standard. Let me arrange those in the correct places. Okay, let's check out these driver pins now. One is standard. Two is a spool. Actually a very nice looking spool for a Chinese lock. Three is a spool. Four is a spool. And five is standard. Okay, so all things considered from a generic Chinese lock, pretty nice looking bidding, or, uh, pinning in here. As far as points we're going to assign this, we got three points for the paracentric keyway, two points for needing a specialized pick. We didn't get the points for having six pins, but we do get an extra three points for our three spools. So that is eight points total for this lock. Okay, let me give you a close up of the pin in here. As you can see, each of those key pins is standard. Then we have standard driver pins in slots one and five. And then we have three spools in slots two, three, and four. Moving over to the core, you can see Nothing terribly special about this at all. Just a nice, simple five pin core. Okay, that's all I have for you on this Chinese padlock and on the debut of this video series. If you have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day.